we have Dr. Subham. Thank you, Nikunj, for inviting me over here. Okay. So, uh, so when we are talking about journey, it's a very personalized thing. So, I feel the ultimate goal, it's not the journey, it's the reaching the correct destination. And that is Nirvana, according to me, that is peace of mind and stability. So, my journey had been a long one. I started from RIO Calcutta, then my residency DNB at SN Chennai. My fellowship was from Shankar Kolkata. Then, along with Nikun and Shivani, I was fortunate to work at Sita Purai Hospital uh, for a, a significant amount of time. And currently, I'm working at Dishai Hospital. So, that is the thought that comes to us initially in our PG days, not another bacha. I mean, it's time consuming patients. It's difficult to see them, examine them. There's not, I mean, later on in our practice, we realized it's not much revenue generating as well. And there's a lot of emotional aspect involved as well. So why, why pediatric ophthalmology? So for me, it was a, a few, I had a few of my own reasons. So it was six months of posting at RIO Calcutta in my DO days. And then I got exposed to uh, one of the few of the best pediatric ophthalmologists when I was in SN Chennai. Um, I, as a person, I had a type B personality. I have a type B personality. I was friendly with children. That's what I felt. And of course, you need to have empathy and you need to rule out your interest in other specialties. I mean, I realized that I cannot do much of VR and I couldn't see the corneal layers. So I realized, ki, okay, pediatric ophthalmology could be good with me because I was good at squints. So making the best out of your fellowship, it's important because this is the time when you actually learn, you observe your consultants, so your seniors are the best teachers. And remember that less is more. You, if you're getting less cases, doesn't mean that you're learning less. You learn, you get and grab the most of, out of it. Uh, always maintain your logbooks. Uh, you know, see as many videos and 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 record your own videos and do your own surgical planning. My uh, mentor used to say to be a good pediatric ophthalmology, you just you need to be a good adult ophthalmologist first. I think that's very important to be a comprehensive ophthalmologist for everything. So handling in children in OPD, it's again you have to use your charm and small talks and baby talks. Always greet it with a smile. And uh, you can never say that the child is uncooperative. I mean, no matter what, you have to make the child cooperative. And uh, then after fellowship, it was actually the real world. So basically, I jumped into the sea. It was a leap of faith. I started along with my um, uh, my wife, actually. She's also a pediatric ophthalmologist. I started the dormant pediatric ophthalmology department at Sitapur Eye Hospital, where we had more than 100 children at the OPD and variety of surgical cases without any backup, no restriction, complete independence. So it really helped us in the long run. and. Uh, just coming to a few clinical scenarios which i felt and i struggled a lot to adjust initial days so yeah lensectomy it's difficult to do lensectomy with a forceps or a cystitome so generally i use cutter for both anterior axis and posterior axis uh, make sure that the rim is well sized uh, because almost every case end up with a capsule of phimosis and the most important thing is the parents counseling because eventually, if you don't be do counsel the patients and the child doesn't wear the uh, fake glasses and all, then it's all for nothing. Uh, so coming on to another very routine day-to-day -day procedure, it's a lens aspiration. So again, optimum rexis was difficult initial days, all the any the centripetal pull. So I ended up having a lot of extensions, which. Uh, could be easily managed with a cut so I initially had those palpitations of rexis extension but the ultimate outcome didn't matter at all so even in very small kids when the rexis is very brittle so I used to use cutter all the time and if you see eventually the rexis is pretty smooth and round so coming on to uh, the posterior rexis it used to give me a lot of palpitations in my fellowship days especially my man mentor was pretty strict I used to stand on my head and I used to have scary thoughts. So the initial, what I learned in my uh, fellowship days was a manual PCC, like uh, the, should the video shown over here. And later in my journey, I just adopted to the retro oil uh, capsular axis with a cutter, which was easy, which was comfortable. And the outcome was absolutely the same, even the long term outcome. Uh, so the, the rexis was round and you could actually easily put the IOL in the bag. Sometimes occasional surprise cases were there like membranous cataracts 
and uh, pre-existing PC defects. Uh, you can see the typical sign, fishtail sign of the pre-existing PC defect, the, the cortical, the, the powdery substances, it's basically vitreous stain with the cortical matter. And uh, traumatic cataracts are the most, I had the most fabulous experience learning from traumatic cataracts. It enhances you as a surgeon. So fortunately for me and unfortunately for the patients, I had a lot of traumatic cataracts. Every, every week we, we had two to three traumatic cataracts at, at Sitapur. Um, so I made an archive out of that, I'm not going to go into the details. So it was so interest, such an interesting to follow up these patients, how they're doing. And uh, strabismus is altogether a different ball game. So uh, in my journey, I just made a few pearls uh, that squint, uh, which which I learned that squint measurement and planning is more important than the actual surgery. And I learned it the hard way: never change your surgical plan intraoperative. You end up you know, with uh, with uh, the wrong unpredictable results, and uh, I always prefer bilateral surgeries over unilateral R and R. So this is again uh, an important thing for squint specialists ki, because bilateral surgeries are usually done under LA under GA. But personally, what we did was we used to do under LA only one eye initially, then do my cataracts, and then end of the day I used to go for the other eye. So that's how we could manage pretty well bilateral adult cases, and uh, always document your pre and post of photos for the patient as well as for your own satisfaction uh, just a few uh, tips of risk okay I'll just uh, I won't get, get, go into the details of this uh, so used to uh, we had a lot of difficult strabismus cases and you should all have this under your repertoire so you should know all these difficult cases and once in a lifetime you should be able to do it and uh, I think that that's more like it and uh, the later the strabis the future of strabismus is everything is becoming minimally invasive so strabismus surgery as well uh, we are currently using only phonic sensation and and glue to close it uh, so what I missed in my fellowship I feel as is key I didn't do too many publications and I could have learned uh, CNLDO and ROP screening that really helps in the private practice so the real, real world currently where I'm working it's different it's a lot of adult FACOs and premium IOLs it's 90% of the practice pediatric practice would be like 10% of it and and complex trabismus is only a few in a year so be prepared for the real world uh, as well like uh, do your enhance on your cataract skills uh, uh, just to conclude, you make your own journey and know what you want from life, define your own destination. I was lucky enough to work with my wife who is also a pediatric ophthalmologist. I learned a lot from her and I had a small pediatric person in our family as well whom we experiment on. Uh, so yeah, thank, thank you so much. That's an amazing. Thank you so much Dr. Subhajit. Amazing.